welcome uh, to this time of prayer on this Sunday morning, Sunday the 27th of June, the fourth Sunday after Trinity. It's good to make this time to pray together, uh, whether we're online or on site um, with Christians all around the world. I'm using today this uh, form of shorter morning prayer um, that Jane Sutton's recently put together. We've been using a similar form for several months now when we've prayed online together on Fridays and copies of this have gone out to people who are in our churches. Jane has recently uh, refreshed it with some different readings and psalms so if you'd like an updated copy for yourself please let me know and I'll make sure you get one. So that's what we're using today uh, and as always there are subtitles if you want to click on CC if that helps you follow. I will use the Gospel reading for this Sunday and then offer a brief reflection on it as well too. So we begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the psalm from this booklet today is Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O Lord, all people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Gospel reading set for the fourth Sunday in Trinity is from the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. 
But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any more? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion and people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This gospel story is said to be deeply symbolic for Mark and it shows a deeply compassionate Jesus who cares for everybody, whatever their circumstance. We don't know much about the woman or about Jairus' daughter, but there's an interesting point made in Mark that the woman has been suffering for 12 years and the little girl is 12 years old. And in the Bible, numbers often have an additional significance and 12 often signifies wholeness or the completion of God's purpose. So immediately we might be alerted here to things being renewed superseded or completed with these two mentions of 12 years. The woman who had spent all that she had and nothing had made her well. No one can restore her to how God wishes or intends her to be. Perhaps in that way she symbolises an age which is about to pass with the teachings and the appearance of Jesus on the earth. We, reach, we read how in her anguish she reaches out to him, despite the shame and embarrassment she might be feeling, pushing through the crowd just to touch his robe. And amazingly, despite all that jostling, Jesus knows that something has happened. And not only does he know, he understands and responds with love and compassion. And we have that story about Jairus' daughter as well, with that sense of the old way of doing things coming to an end. Jairus is an important man in the synagogue, probably one of the most important and influential peoples there are. A member of that group who themselves have been questioning Jesus and what he does. And yet here he is, coming to Jesus as well, pleading with him to save his daughter, risking the disapproval of community and colleagues, friends and family. Perhaps he himself still has doubts about what Jesus is and what he's doing, but he comes anyway, prepared to take that risk, just like that woman. He doesn't know what Jesus is going to do, but perhaps he turns to him as a last resort, someone who may have an answer. And so both of them are at their wit's end in this story, but they come anyway, with whatever hope they have that with Jesus things might change. And so they do. Jairus' daughter has been ill, she's 12 years old, but she's brought back to new life by his touch. Perhaps, as I said, that 12 symbolising something about the completion of God's purpose bringing in new life, and a new life in different ways for everybody. 
It's interesting as well in that story that given where he is with the leader of the synagogue, Jesus might have been expected to speak in Hebrew or Greek. But actually he speaks in the common language of everyday people in Aramaic. Again, wonderfully suggesting something new, a new relationship of God with his people that's open for all, not just the Hebrew speaking people, the Jews, something that includes both men and women. So there's a lot in this passage, in these particular examples that may be symbolic, maybe that Mark is trying to convey as he presents these accounts to us. Something about the present, the new and the future in these stories. Not that Jesus does away with the old, but he brings it to new life and new vitality. And he promises a kingdom yet to come as well, with renewal and restoration. And also in this story, another thing to notice how Jesus is there when people reach out to him, just like that woman did. But he's also there and he reaches out to other people just as he did to Jairus' daughter. Whatever their circumstances, even with the smallest glimmer of hope, he can be reached out to and he will reach out for others. And we might like to think about that in our lives too, how there have been times when we've reached out to God and known him present or sometimes when we have to actually drop our defences and let him reach out to us having faith in him the fact that he is there and has that love and compassion for all people in these stories is such a profound hope that jesus could and can change things for people in desperate situations and lives are transformed as a result with that contact with jesus with christ and it's something that's not exclusive, that we can rejoice in today. It's for each and everyone, for absolutely everybody, whatever their situation or background, an offer to touch and transform lives that are not as God intended, but to help people experience that life that he longs for them here on earth and as we make this journey through life. So let that be our rejoicing today and our prayer as well, an encouragement to reach out to Jesus and to allow him to reach out to us as well. Amen. This reading and these thoughts may feed our prayers today as we gather for prayer. There is much in the world that we might pray for as we listen to the news, the ongoing situation with COVID and the wisdom that's needed there as we look to the future. We're very aware of the situation in government at the moment and those that are being accused for the sense of hypocrisy that many people feel that there exists and double standards. And so we continue to pray for our leaders in the world, both in government and business, for good leaders and wise leaders, and leaders with a sense of service and honour. We pray for ourselves and those we love and care for. In our benefits, we're giving thanks for those recently married and those preparing for their weddings in the weeks to come. Also for all the Christians we've got coming up, for people placing their children in God's hands and making promises to bring them up as Christians. Pray for them and for those who care for them that they will be inspired to be faithful to that calling. Pray too for those who are suffering and bereaved. There are many listed on our pew sheets, many we might know of, and we can bring them to God. It may be that unlike the people in our story, they can't come themselves, but we can bring them to God and pray that he touches them and they would know his consolation and his comfort. So many of these things may be in your minds today as we pray. And I invite you just to hold in your minds those things that are significant to you. And I will lead us in some very simple prayers 
leaving some space for our own thoughts. And the response to these is simply, we pray to you, O Lord. So the response once more, we pray to you, O Lord. That this day and all our days may be full of your praise. We pray to you, O Lord. that you will keep us this day without sin. We pray to you, O Lord, that we may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will bless your people and lift them up forever. We pray to you, O Lord, that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We pray to you, O Lord, so let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. And let us pray also with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And